You're watching the Wellness Hour news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, replacing missing teeth with dental implants. With us, we've had him on the program before. He's an expert on the topic, Dr. Rudy Wassener. Dr. Wassener, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Randy. Great to be back. All right, lots of questions in light of the coronavirus. Uh, yeah. Lots of people afraid to go to the dentist. Lots of people that need to go to the dentist. They don't know you know, what is considered an emergency. So hopefully you'll answer some of these questions and what you sure. are doing to keep people safe. But first off, dental implants. Who's your typical dental implant patient? You know, it's, it's a typical person would be is, you know, they might have bleeding gums, you know, and maybe missing teeth and they can chew properly and uh, it doesn't look all that good. And uh, they're looking at, at better ways, how to, how to function and smile and live the lives like they're used to. These people are feeling that they're going to lose all their teeth and they're going to end up with dentures. And they don't want dentures. You know, they, uh, they might have experienced with family, friends, or even themselves to some degree or another. That's the one thing they like to avoid. And then they come and see me. So these, these people are looking for some, some, uh, some options. And they come to see me then for a brand new set of teeth. Not just dentures teeth, but teeth that stay in on their own. Okay, good. Now, denture wearers. Uh, you work a lot with people that are currently wearing dentures. What are their options when it comes to dental implants? There's a lot of things we can do for people that have lost all their teeth. Uh, we can just add a, a number of implants and then uh, make new teeth on them, on those implants that stay in and comfortable and uh, don't need to worry about as much. And they last a very long time. And um, many of them are just surprised that it's possible for even like four or five or maybe six implants to give them a brand new set of teeth that don't come out like dentures do. And they love it. Is this a popular procedure, getting a brand new set of teeth supported by implants in your practice? Oh, yeah, very popular. We do this about every day. There's always something going on. We either restoring them or replacing them or we're talking about implants for people. And they, they just are so delighted to hear that there's options for them finally. And they're very excited about that. Okay, good. How old can you be to get dental implants? Uh, I love telling this story. I got this one patient. Uh, he came in just the other day for uh, for a check on his implants, and uh, he's 93 years old right now. And we did tell his implants when he was younger. He was only 83, and uh, he had bridges in his mouth, upper and lower, you know, both sides. And this time he got wobbly, and he's going to lose some of them, and he was worried about that. And uh, he really wanted to be able to function like he had been. And mind you, he was 83 at the time. And his family was kind of thinking about me, are you, am I too old, this and that? And he was thinking the same thing too. I said, well, no, if you're healthy and you still you know, want to live that quality of life, you're never too old for implants. So what we did for him was uh, we removed those bridges because they, they, you know, we couldn't keep them anymore, put in implants, let it heal, put brand new teeth on them that don't come out and they can chew and you can smile and he's just absolutely loving it. And now 10 years later, you know, he keeps telling me it was the best thing he ever did. Is that right? So I guess when you hear a 93 year old can do this, so in the 70s and 80s, that's not old at all to be doing this. Not at all. Not at all. Many, many of my patients are advanced age, you know, and they're still vibrant. They still like to get out and golf and travel and uh, have dinner with friends and family. Okay, great. Now, let's talk a little bit about COVID-19. Yeah. In dentistry, you say, when we've had a conversation on the phone, that you picked it up a notch as far as the safety. So what are you doing now that maybe you weren't doing before to ensure safety? Well, we, we always have been doing a lot of things uh, to keep things safe, like infection control. And, and just the funny thing is that just two months ago, maybe three months ago, just before COVID, you know, I bought a brand new sterilizer, bought brand new dental chair, and a whole bunch of improvements which we do on a regular basis anyhow. So now COVID came along, and uh, there's this big worry out there. And I can tell you that dentistry, we are the experts in infection control. We are used to working along viruses like HIV and hepatitis and all these things and tuberculosis, all these things. We're used to dealing with that. And our protocols are so strict already that there is no documented case that anybody ever got sick from going to the dentist. Um, but to answer your question, what we do now is that differently. Well, we have, uh, we put in a, like a, a medical grade filtration system to, uh, to make sure the air is really, really clean and fresh in the office. 
We put in splash guards uh, at the front desk. We only letting in one or two patients at a time, so everybody can safely, safely distance. Um, we washing down Nordobs. We're wearing full gowns and 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 visors and hats and obviously gloves. All these things we take it very very seriously because people are are a little scared. But dentistry, there is really no reason to have any worries. Are you taking people's temperatures? When yeah. they come in? Yeah, we take uh, people's temperatures when they come in. And then if they come with an escort, we ask the escort to wait outside in their car. So we can just call them or, or, uh, or uh, someone's back in to, uh, to pick up their, uh, their friend or the family member. Just to keep everybody safe and not too many people at the same, same time. We removed all the uh, magazines because everybody touches them. We uh, took away the coffee machine, uh, same thing, you know, it's, it's, it's like a few more notches uh, up from what we used to be. And you know what, it's good, it's good. Nothing wrong with getting better all the time. That's what dentistry is all about. Okay, now, you know, I know, we're, you know I'm interviewing you here in the States, but yeah. in, 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 in Canada, what are the rules? Like what types of patients as of today's date are you allowed to see? Uh, like what is an emergency patient for you? For me, an emergency patient would be somebody has an infection, somebody is obvious discomfort, you know, they can't sleep, but there's too much pain, or somebody just plain all worried about things. And uh, if it's starting to affect their general health or the quality of life, uh, and they can't sleep and they can't think, and it's, it's that, yeah, we definitely will get them in and we'll take care of them for sure. Okay. Now, take me through the dental implant process. Okay, because you mentioned yeah. there's like two main groups. There's the people that need extractions and brand new teeth that don't come out, and then the people that yeah. are wearing dentures um, that want something now that is not removable, that's just fixed in their mouth. Yeah. yeah. So, take me through the process. So, if a denture, let's move to the denture wears. Let's say somebody's yeah. been wearing a denture five or 10 years. They go to your office. Yeah. What are their options when it comes to dental implants? Their options are, are many, many fold actually. Uh, it all depends on their, on their level uh, of expectations. Uh, if they want teeth that stay in permanently, uh, it's a little bit different approach than if they say, oh, I don't mind my denture, if it would only stay in better. You know, so there's different things at different price points and different complexity that we can offer our patients to uh, get the best possible results. For the lower, this is the option. Like if they would like to have uh, teeth that snap in and snap out, you know, so let's say they have a denture, it's loose, they don't like that, and they like it to stay in better, we can do that. If they want that teeth to stay in all the time, they don't come out at all, we can do that. Uh, on the lower jaw, it's, it's nice because if things are nice and stable, but on the upper jaws, another thing is that with a regular denture, your, the roof of your mouth is covered with plastic and it affects their teeth buds and sometimes it makes people gag you know and uh, you you generate all kinds of smell from 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 that piece of material up against the roof of your mouth and then with the implant option we don't have that we put in a couple of implants we don't need to cover the palate or the roof of the mouth anymore and it's just like having natural teeth again now insurance even the best dental insurance i know here in uh in the States really doesn't cover this. We have Medicare and Medicaid here, doesn't cover it, but people are financing it here. Are you financing it there, some of these procedures? Uh, we finance it all the time. Like, uh, and I tell my patients, you know, when you go over the implants, you know, it's, it's an investment in your health and well-being. Uh, it's, it's something you need to plan. And uh, if it's a budget issue for you, we can help them with that and making payments on it. And you know, that's what people are used to, and it's, it works out really well for them. Now, I know that in Canada, you have denturists, that all they do is make dentures. But yes. because dental implants have become so mainstream, um, that do you think no more dentures is the future? I think we've talked about this before, but like <laughs> the future might be traditional dentures will be gone. They'll all be attached to something. What are your thoughts on that? I think uh, the standard care these days would suggest that if somebody is about to lose all their teeth or most of their teeth, that the implant option is the preferred option. That's what most dentists would agree is the best thing we should offer our patients. Now, the reality is some people are not, uh, not prepared to, to do that. And yes, there will always be some that uh, end up at dentures. But I can tell you that even if they do, and if it's been years, 
since they lost their teeth, there's still a lot of things we can do for them to still give them a better quality of life with more comfort. Are there a lot of people, a lot of denture wearers in Canada? Oh, sure. There's a lot of people that uh, for some reason or another lost their teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No question about that. Like, would you say tens of thousands? Half a million people? Oh, I would say probably millions. Yeah, okay. millions. Yeah, so let's if be dental, honest, that's what it is. Okay, so if, if, if these denture wearers could literally go in, as you say, they get a yeah. brand new set of teeth that don't come in and out, why aren't they all doing it? What's your take? It's a very good question, uh, Randy. Like, I think what it is is that if they knew about dental implants, you know, they probably would. But the thing is, they haven't seen a dentist for so long, they don't really know who to ask or they don't know how to go about it, you know? Okay. So uh, if it's a regular patient of ours, of course we can help them and we can just kind of uh, give them the information that they require. But the average dental patient doesn't really know how to approach it. And that's, okay, we, that's why quite often they don't. We talked at the break, right? Yeah. yeah. And you said, or we talked about that, if all the denture wearers in Canada figured yeah. out how good it was to get their teeth back supported by dental implants. There's not even enough oral surgeons, periodontists, prosthodontists, uh, a dentist to even be able to handle all, all the people. Is that, would you say that's oh, yeah. true? That's, that's so true, that's so true. Uh, and it, and it, is, it is an issue and, and, I, and that makes me kind of sad sometimes, you know, to see some people go through life not knowing what, uh, what the possibilities are. And I can tell you, in my, in my practice, the, all the things I do, you know, I get people out of pain and this and that and all and, and, and so on. But the implant component is probably the only one where it is actually life changing. You know, okay. people just uh, are so happy with it. And they say, well, I wish I've done this 10 years earlier. You know, that, that's we get this all the time. It makes such a big difference. And the patients that see you on TV yeah. or the patients that were referred to you, mm. when they get this when they're there on the consult what are the frequently asked questions they have like what do they want to know maybe you could answer some of those right here well a uh, couple of things they uh they like to know uh, what's involved uh, they like to know if it's going to hurt they uh like to know how much it's going to cost okay and um how long is going to last all right that's, and you say it could be considered that. permanent. I mean, if like somebody in their 60s or even 50s or 80s. Yeah. So if they get it done, a denture wear now converts to a, a, a set of upper and lower teeth that don't come out. How long can they last? I mean, if they take care of them. We're looking at implants these days as potentially a 30 year restoration. So okay. if the implants are put in the way it's supposed to, if the patient is healthy, if they do you know, certain things to keep things in good shape, um, 30 years or more. And uh, I've done cases, like I said earlier, in the late, uh, late 80s, and most of those cases today uh, are still operational. They're still fine. Yeah. So what do they like more? Do they like what they can eat and chew when they get their new teeth, or do they like the way it looks? Well, it's, it's, it's probably both. But uh, one case comes to mind. It's an interesting man. He was, uh, in, uh, he was uh, in his late, mid to late 60s. And his teeth were kind of worn out and uh, he didn't smile much because he was very conscious about the appearance. And uh, then he said, uh, well, what can you do? You know, and he saw all those pictures up in the wall of my office, the case that we completed. And I say, well, if, if we get this done, I, am I going to be on that wall too for some days? Said, well, maybe. Said, you know, his name is Harry. You know, maybe we can maybe pull it off for you. So uh, anyway, we went ahead, did all the work for him. And uh, he loved his smile, but then he came back about a month or two later and said, you know what, I love the way you look, but I never realized how good it is to chew again, you know? So, so it kind of shows that, that people want both, and, and I think they should have both, why not? And, and that's, what, that's why it's, what I've learned over the years is that when you look at appearance and when you look at the function, usually if things work well, they'll tend to look better too, automatically. Okay. All right. And that's now, what we started looking for all of our patients. Now, in light of the coronavirus, and yeah. I guess with a surgical procedure, you create a certain amount of aerosols, and everybody's worried about yeah. these aerosols. So yeah, what yeah, are you yeah. doing for the implant process for these larger full-mouth cases? What are you doing to keep them safe? 
First of all, we go through a uh, very comprehensive intake exam. So what we do is we check out their health, make sure that uh, there's no medical issues that we need to address or maybe discuss with their doctor about. Uh, we have, you know, fantastic uh, infection control measures. We wear the uh, surgical hats and gowns and goggles, and uh, we make sure everything is really sterile, that they're well taken care of. We monitor their blood pressure, we monitor their breathing, and there's a lot of talk about aerosols in dentistry. Uh, aerosols always have been around in dentistry. I think uh, we've been very good at working with that. And, and one thing we do is uh, high volume uh, evacuation, like suction, picks, picks up most of that and goes straight out the door. But after the, uh, after the COVID situation came to light, what I also did in my office, I put in a, a HEPA filter system. Now, what it is, is like a medical grade air filtration system that also have UV sterilization and also carbon uh, to take all the odor out. So they get very, very clean air in our office. And um, there's a noticeable difference in that. You know, coming to a dentist's office like ours is much different than going to the hospital and see a doctor or go for an operation of any kind. You know, when people go to the dentist, they're healthy. You know, when people go to the doctor, they're sick. Okay. So it's a Good totally point. different different situation. And even the comparison, I think, is not fair to make because they're totally different things. Totally different things. Now, I had a, I had a dentist on my show the other day. Yeah. And, and he, he made the statement. He goes, Randy, I think the safest place uh, is in my office, <laughs> right? Because of I all... I believe it, yeah. No, I agree. Do, do you feel like you're... Like well, it's a very yeah. safe environment? Yeah, I can say that. Even with Corona going on, yeah. Okay, okay. Good. you know, Randy, let me let me be honest with you. Um, this is all coronavirus. Yes, it is. It is a pandemic, and we never experienced it before. Uh, I did a lot of studying on it just recently, finding out more about it, and I can tell you honestly that the best place for me to be would be in my office because I know it's the cleanest place in town. You know. Okay. Good. And, good. And that, and and I feel that way, and my staff feels that way. So our goal is really simple. We want to have it as clean as possible. We want to have everybody safe. We don't want no problems. And okay. we'll do whatever it takes to accomplish that. Okay, now people lose their teeth for a variety of reasons. Some people get them knocked out. But as you explained to me on past interviews, that this bacterial infection, sometimes gum disease, that yeah. this infection is compromising to a person's immune system. So yes. if you're fighting off this bacterial infection in your mouth, you have less, you know, uh, of immune system to fight yep. off the coronavirus. Right. So speak to that for a moment. If somebody okay. has bleeding gums, bad breath, loose teeth, gum disease, why would you want, especially during COVID, clean up that infection? If you, if you have an infection in your mouth, and let's say with a gum infection, usually you've had it for quite some time, you know, and it needs to be managed. Now, any infection in our body, it takes energy away. You know, our body has to fight it off, has to contain it, has to make antibodies, and all those things to remain healthy. So you can only imagine if, if there's infections in your mouth that are easily treatable, but if that's not happening, then it puts you more at risk. So when you, because you do a lot of this in plant dentistry, when you have people with a chronic infection in their mouth and you extract these infected teeth, do yeah. they ever report like they feel better or they have more energy? Anything I get like that, that you hear that? Yes, I get it all the time. Like uh, the funny thing is people get used to having a certain amount of pain and discomfort. They think that's normal. And when all of a sudden, you know, we remove the infections and we give them new teeth that stay in uh, that they can chew with and smile with and so on. And then they realize not, a little, not like a little bit later that all of a sudden they, they feel it's almost better. Like the whole, the whole vibrancy has, uh, has gotten better and they feel healthier, but you know what? They are healthier without an infection. You know, we have medical doctors on our program. We've, you know, we've, we've had the program for 20 years now and yeah. all of the newer mainstream medical doctors, alternative integrative medicine doctors are, are all mentioning now, if you've got an infection in your mouth, like loose teeth or bleeding gums, you've got to get that cleaned up because it could lead to a lot of other things. And something you said was interesting. So if you have bleeding gums, that means any germ you have going your way is gonna enter your bloodstream or, or yeah, it it's does. easier to enter your bloodstream. Yeah, it does, yeah. It, it's well documented. Uh, sometimes it can cause uh, a uh, infection in the heart. 
uh, other things can happen. It just, uh, like, like we discussed earlier, it's just a burden to the system. And, and anything we can do as individuals is to do what we can to stay healthy. And having a healthy mouth is a big part of general health. And it's, it's nice to hear that the medical communities right now are starting to more and more recognize that, yes, it is all connected. You cannot look at one thing without looking at the other. And dentistry has always been at the forefront. You know, like medicine is more into managing disease, but in dentistry, we've been making people healthier. Is that right? Now, yeah. if you have severe gum disease, yeah. could you still be a candidate for dental implants, getting a brand new set of teeth, upper and lower, that are fixed if your gums are too bad? Well, the oh, yeah, those are stay? our favorite patients because it's so predictable for us to clean all that up, uh, get them healthy gums, make them healthier as a person, and at the same time, give them teeth that don't come out and that they can chew and smile with. Dr. Wasser, we are out of time. But yeah. for somebody watching this, okay, they're either the two groups. They're yeah. currently wearing dentures and they'd love to have a brand new set of teeth, upper and lower, that don't come out. Or they have really bad teeth, bleeding gums, the bad yeah. breath hurts. Yeah. They're loose, but they're still afraid. I mean, coronavirus, you know, people don't want to get it. So what do you say to those people? How do they inch along or go to the next step? You know, we're just in the process of incorporating uh, a concept what we call virtual consultations. And what we do is we gather some information from the patients some basic information. And then we um, put together some, uh, some approach that we feel might, might help them. And then we present that in a video format, much like our conversation right now. You know, we're both okay. on, the, on the screen and they have opportunity to ask questions and, and they get to meet me uh, in, in person, although with the screen in between, obviously, but still it's nice. And then I get to know them a little bit. And then when they finally come in for their first appointment, you know, it's not like going in cold anymore. We already okay. know them. They, they know they're in good hands and we kind of know what kind of person is going to come visit us and be excited about that. And uh, yeah, that, that's, that's, uh, that's something we're working on very hard right now. And that should be up and running in a couple of weeks. So, so we are on, on Skype right now, but you could do yeah. Zoom, you could do FaceTime on their phone. That's right. So these, they call it telemedicine, virtual yeah. consults. So yeah. you're on board with a virtual consult right now. And that seems like the safest way to go. Meet you first on the, the you know, via the web. Oh, exactly. Get a gut feeling for you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's a serious way to go, but not only that, it's convenient. Like I, I live in a small town and some of my patients, they're driving like four or five hours to come get to me, you know, and they have to drive four or five hours back to go home. So you can imagine that if they don't live right next door, you know, we can still make those connections. We can still communicate with them as to who it is, uh, who they are, uh, what their goals are, uh, what they, maybe their fears are. We can address all that and get about three quarters of the way there. And then when we do get them in in person, that's more or less to take clinical records and get the actual procedure started. But it's a wonderful way to communicate. Okay, so as a recap, okay. With the coronavirus pandemic, yeah, yeah. if you are in pain, they could go see you. Is that correct? For sure, yeah. If yeah. that's an emergency, yeah. all right. Yeah, we're open, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, we are always available for our patients if somebody needs help. But we're going to do whatever we can to uh, to make things comfortable for them, for sure. Now, do you think that this is going to change the way you practice forever as far as, you know, doing these virtual consults, being extra clean, paying more attention to aerosols, uh, all of those things? you think that that's going to last for a long, long time? You know, that's kind of the way dentistry is. You know, we're always getting better. We're always doing a better job. We're always looking at, at breaking new barriers and uh, having an area that, that we uh, spend more time keeping it clean and this and that. And now virtual consultations, it's all technology driven. Um, it's fantastic. Okay, uh, good, I good. welcome changes. I'm, I'm excited about that. Now there's lots of denturists in your area yeah. and throughout yeah. Canada. Are, they, are any of them sending you patients to, oh, yeah. to help? Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like in Canada, the, uh, the insurers are allowed to uh, make the teeth on them. Uh, so uh, I have uh, connections with a number of the insurers in my area. And uh, if they feel that they cannot help a patient with a conventional denture and patient needs implants, then we'll do the implants and then they'll be taken care of that way. So 
you know, you know, I've, I've been told, I know a few people yeah. wearing dentures, that that, de- that lower denture is terrible, right? So if somebody has a relationship with their denturist, they, the yeah. denturist, they don't have to leave the denturist. You could place the implants, the denturist could work together as a team to give them a brand new set of teeth that don't come in and out. Is that kind of exactly. how it works? Exactly, that's how it works. Yeah, they, uh, they come in for the implants to be placed. We take care of that for them, and then they uh, see uh, go see their uh, dentures again, and they'll make the teeth on it, for sure. Okay. All right. Now, you are well-known in your community. You do some yes. advertising where they say Rudy is the guy. Is that it? That's it. Yeah, I'm the guy. Yeah. And people say Rudy is the guy. You said you, you, you walked down the street before, and people, tell me about that. Well, there was one time I was walking, uh, walking out out, uh, out in the street there, and uh, it was a, um, a gentleman with two of his kids, and he yelled across the street. He said, "Rudy is the guy," <laughs> you know, because we got this uh, this uh, thing going on in the theater, and then during intermission they uh, they play like a little clip about our office, and one of my patients, her name is Joan, you know, she was very happy about her teeth, and uh, she kind of did an interview for us, and she said at the end of that, so well. He's my dentist. Rudy is the guy. Right. And, and it's stuck. And, and it's Rudy stuck. is the guy stuck. Yeah. And, and, the, and the manager of the theater you know, told me uh, on this one occasion, he said, sometimes people in the uh, auditorium are actually chanting it because they know the ad is coming up. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually that's, phenomenal. That's good. Okay. Well, Dr. Wasser, we're out of time. Final message again. Somebody watching this, they're either in a lot of pain uh, or they have a denture that they just do not like. Maybe it even hurts them. Uh, what's your advice? And they're still afraid. My advice is make, make the call, uh, send us an email. Uh, dentistry has a lot to offer, has a lot to offer. You'll be safe. You'll be happy with the results. And um, yeah, it will we'll help you get there for sure. Okay, Dr. Wasser, pleasure having you back on the program. Thanks, Thanks. for having me again, Randy. Take care. You've been watching the Wellness Hour news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.